Hey guys, I am Joy and you're watching my YouTube channel Universal Joy. In this video, we'll be talking about again one of the most important and very, very, very essential topic as to the respiratory system, which is also known as mechanism for the expiration. We'll be learning that in the previous video. We have talked a lot about inspirational activity. So we'll be covering this expirational activity or mechanism for the expression, which is almost and very, very much akin to the entire activity of the inspiration. So if you have watched the first video, then this video will be engulfed by you very, very rapidly. So my recommendation to you will be to watch the first first video if you haven't and before getting into the video if you are new to this channel then first and foremost task for you is going to be to get yourself subscribed to our channel and also hit that bell icon below as well so that you don't uh, you know become deprived of watching the videos in the future of our channel now without wasting too much of the time let us just get into the video in this video we'll be talking about the mechanism mechanism for for expiration mechanism for expiration so i'll start from the inspirational activity because it is almost uh, you know going to be uh, you know in the opposite direction of the in inspiration so if you are not acquainted with inspiration then expirational activities will not be engulfed by you very well so what really happens i'm going to be giving a quick recap within two or one minutes uh, about the inspiration then i'll get back to the normal lecture okay now in the inspiration now definitely the thoracic volume will increase the thoracic cavities volume will increase and due to the expansion of the lung due to the expansion of the thoracic cavity there will be a sudden fall down of the intra pleural or intra alveolar pressure so basically there are five pressures which act within the border of the lung out of which we learnt only two different important pressures which include intra pleural pressure and also intra alveolar pressure but there are few other you know pressures which also act within the border of the lung which we haven't come across yet we will you know make another different video on that you know uh, you know pressures but for the time being you just keep only one thing in your mind is that there are two pressures at the moment which act inside the border of the lung and due to the expansion of the you know thoracic cavity those two pressures fall down and they give a negative negative pressure in the lung that means there will be more negativity arising within the border of the lung and more positivity arising in outside the border of the lung that means more positive pressure will be found outside uh, of the lung and more negative pressure will be found inside the lung and this will allow certain amount of the air to flow into our lung from the outer atmospheric source so this is called inspiration now we'll be learning expiration now one thing that you have to keep it in your mind is that expiration is definitely called a passive process because there is no involvement of the muscles contraction but the, having said that that doesn't mean that there is not there is no muscle which contracts during expiration of course if you do act your activity very forcefully for example if you run very rapidly or if you sprint very fast or if you you know uh, swim very rapidly then of course your serratus anterior or serratus 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 uh, you know posterior inferior muscle or rectus abdominis muscle will be contracting in the forceful expression and then your then it will no longer be a passive process but overall no, in normally whenever you are breathing out then there is no muscles contraction that's the major reason we call it to be a passive process because whenever you are breathing out normally whenever you are you know expiring normally uh, that time there is no contraction of the muscles that's the major reason it's called a passive process anyways that's a different story we'll not talk into you know or will not uh, you know go into that in this video first thing that you have to inculcate in your mind is that during expiration respiratory center is found to be destimulated that means during expiration first and you know first condition is that respiratory center has to be under cessation respiratory center will be inactivated or in other word you can say respiratory center comes to a halt so if respiratory center comes to a halt so there will be no more signal to the phrenic nerve no so phrenic nerve and also intercostal nerve intercostal nerve both these nerves will be found destimulated that means both these nerves will come to a halt and we have already come across the function of phrenic nerve is to send signal to the diaphragm and the function of intercostal nerve is to send signal to the intercostal muscles in the inspiration because of this you know signal or because of the activation of this intercostal nerve the you know intercostal muscles were getting the signal and then after the reception of the signal after the reception of the signal via intercostal nerve 
to the intercostal muscles the intercostal muscles exhibited elevation and due to the elevation of the intercostal muscle in, in inspiration the entire posterior and transverse diameter of the thoracic cavity increased but right now during expiration the intercostal muscles are the intercostal nerves are not working similarly the phrenic nerve is also not working so there will be no more signal going from this intercostal nerve on, on the other hand no more signal growing going from this phrenic nerve so the diaphragm let's just suppose this is our diaphragm because phrenic is always related to diaphragm let's just suppose after the completion of inspiration the diaphragm has already been pulled downward during inspiration the diaphragm is pulled downward to increase the vertical diameter of the thoracic cavity now after the end of the inspiration let's just suppose the diaphragm has already been con contracted and it is already descended downward let's just suppose this is our thoracic cavity okay now as there is no more signal in the expiration in, i'm talking about right away about the expiration as there is no more signal from this predictive to the diaphragm so diaphragm will now be relaxing and the moment the diaphragm relaxes it goes upward that means from this position drawn in the black color right now it will be relaxing and it will be going upward okay the diaphragm from this position drawn in the black color has right now gone upward and it has already relaxed which has been represented with the red color now if that happens you see previously the vertical diameter was like this okay and after the ascending of the diaphragm upward the vertical diameter has become like this that means you could easily differentiate between the two vertical diameters is it bigger or is it bigger definitely the second one is smaller and the first one is bigger so when the diaphragm ascends upward that time the vertical diameter is found to be decreased so the, there will be vertical diameter reduction so there will be the reduction of the vertical diameter okay and if the vertical diameter is found to be diminished then definitely there will be a reduction of the you know volume so this is again one way of reducing volume so the vertical volume will be reduced and on the other side intercostal nerve right now comes to a halt so intercostal nerve will be sending no more signal to the intercostal muscles so ribs which were found to be elevated during inspiration will now be found to be depressed that means the ribs from the elevational status will now will now be depressing downward and if ribs start depressing downward then the entire posterior di diameter and also the transverse diameter will be you know diminished that means the transverse diameter and anterior posterior diameter both these diameters will be reduced so ultimately both these volumes will be reduced so you could see the reduction of the volume in three dimensions okay so i'm going to be writing down the net results once again due to the you know inactivation of the nerves there will be a reduction of the vertical volume similarly there will be a reduction of the anterior posterior and transverse volume okay so the net result is to reduce the volume as volume has now you know reduced or has right now we have seen the volume to be reduced so the pressure within the lung will be found to be increased because again i've mentioned it thousands of the times that volume is always inversely proportional to pressure so if pressure is found to be decreased volume will increase if volume decreases pressure will also increase so <coughs> here volume decreases and this will result in the enhancement of the pressure now what are those two pressures which will result in the you know uh, which will play a very you know important role in the completion of the expression those those two pressures include intraalveolar pressure and also intrapleural pressure so you could see at during inspiration during inspiration you know intrapleural pressure intrapleural pressure was at minus 7.5 cm of the water and as right now i should increase the pressure because of the decrease of the you know volume so intra you know pleural pressure arises from minus 7.5 cm of the water up to minus 5 cm of the water okay and similarly intra alveolar pressure which was approximately minus 1 cm of the water at the at the end of the inspiration will now cross zero and go up to plus 1 cm of the water i can showcase this phenomenon with the help of a diagram so let me just draw a diagram let's just suppose this is our lung okay and this is our parietal pleura 
So what really happens is that right now the there is a reduction of the volume. So the lung will be squeezing inward. That means the lung is trying its level best to you know uh, be less expanded. So normally the lung was in this structure and due to the reduction of the volume you could see this this space between the parietal pleura and let's just suppose this is visceral pleura. The space between parietal pleura and visceral pleura is definitely known as pleural cavity. So you could see if the lung you know shrinks then the lung will definitely become smaller in size. Similarly this parietal pleura will go inward. You could see So you can easily differentiate between the two lungs. Here the parietal cap uh, pleural cavity was a little bigger and here due to the shrinkage of the lung inward the parietal pleura has right now come a little closer to the visceral pleura and this results in the reduction of the pleural cavity and as the volume of the pleural cavity has been reduced so the pressure within the pleura will be increased how much? How much will it be increased? From minus 7.5 centimeter of the water it will go to minus 5 centimeter of the water so you could see a slight increase of the pleural pressure similarly within the lung there were lung alveoli so you could see prior to the expression the lung alveoli was a slight bigger the lung alveoli was bigger in size and as the as now as you know lungs are expanding uh, as lungs are no longer expanding Rather it is you know trying to you know squeeze inward or is trying to you know pull its size inward so the you know uh, you know uh, this is called lung uh, this is called you know alveoli so this alveoli will also be shrinking inward so the alveoli will also be shrinking inward so see can you actually differentiate between the two sizes of this you know uh, alveoli the alveoli was bigger okay prior to the expiration now alveolar lung alveoli has the lung alveoli have already uh, become smaller so there is a reduction of the volume of the lung alveoli also and this will result in the decrease of the volume of the lung alveoli and increase of the pressure within the lung alveoli so intra alveolar pressure will arise from minus one centimeter of the water up to plus one centimeter of the water so there is more positivity arising within the lungs and negativity arising in outside the lung more positivity arising in the pressure of the lung and more negativity arising in outside the border of the lung okay so the air always moves from the higher pressure to the lower pressure so air will keep on you know, going outward the air will keep on moving outward from the lung alveoli to the outer atmospheric air now this will result in expiration this will result in what this will result in expiration so this was the very 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 easy topic as to expression so basically if you have learned the inspiration then expression will already come under your grip very rapidly so what is happening i'm going to be giving a quick recap so that you you know inculcate it in your mind eternally first of all respiratory respiratory center will come under cessation so no more signal through the phrenic nerve no more signal through the intercostal nerve so intercostal muscles will be relaxed and similarly on the other hand you know uh, you know phrenic uh, muscles are also uh, you know the muscles which actually play an important role in the contraction of the diaphragm will right now be relaxing so the diaphragm will also relax the diaphragm will go a little upward and this will result in the reduction of the vertical diameter of the thoracic cavity and on the other side the ribs will showcase you know depression this will result in the anterior and, and anterior posterior and transverse diameter to be decreased so there will be a net decrease of the thoracic cavity so lung will be trying to squeeze inward lung will be trying to shrink inward and the moment the lung showcases uh, the you know shrinkage there will be a reduction of the volume but an increase of the pressure so intraalveolar pressure and also intrapleural pressure both these you know pressures will exhibit a slight rise intrapleural pressure from minus 7.5 centimeter of the water will go up to minus 5 centimeter of the water so there is a slight increase of the intrapleural pressure similarly intraalveolar pressure which actually you know is observed within the lung or within the alveoli 
will also showcase the same phenomenon. It will also rise from minus 7 centimeter of the water up to plus 1 centimeter of the water. And these all events will result in the slight positivity arising within the lung and slight negativity arising outside the lung. So air always moves from the higher pressure to the lower pressure and due to this reason uh, expression will ultimately accomplish, expression will ultimately be accomplished and this was all about the expiration. Hope you have liked this video. If you have liked this video then uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel and also hit that bell icon below as well.